Hello and welcome, my name is Darren McLaughlin. In this video series, I'll be going over Blender and XML and how those, you know, two softwares and coding, how that, how all that stuff interacts with like your, um, I'll also be going over some, you know, I do, I do a few Blender tutorials and a few XML tutorials. Now you may already know Blender because you may have already taken the Blender Pluralsight course, but you may not necessarily know how Blender uh, interacts with our system. So that's kind of what this video series is for, just to kind of show you how to edit some of our objects, how to you know texture some of our objects, how to animate them, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, I think in this first video, I just kind of go over the basics about how everything is intertwined. Um, and then in, in future videos, I'll probably do examples of like, you know, how to animate a knob or how to animate uh, a toggle switch or whatever, um, or like a latch switch or, or what have you. And then I may do some other videos about how to do specific things in Blender that uh, people may have trouble with. So, so let's get started. So, you know, at, at first, I want to talk about how everything is kind of intertwined here. So we have flight gear here. We have our aircraft, our our 787 aircraft. We can fly, and and this, you know, if you want to learn how to fly flight gear, you might want to watch Micah's videos. I'm just opening this to kind of sh kind of show you. Um, it's it's uh, kind of leading you into what I'm talking about with Blender. <clears throat> so. Let's wait for this to open. So you should know that every object in flight gear is gonna be every every object in flight gear has been designed and modeled in Blender. And what is Blender? Blender is a you know 3D modeling software, uh, mostly used in video games, and it's really good for like animating objects or like um, it's really good for any type of video game. Uh, it's different than that of SolidWorks, and that SolidWorks is kind of for you know industry use. It's not really geared for video games. Or any type of like simulation software, Blender is kind of geared towards. It's it's used for like simulations and for video games stuff like that. So if you go to Flight Gear, you'll just look around, and every object you see is has been like modeled in Blender. Um, even the seats, the all the buttons, toggle switches, control knobs, the images here, you know the PNG files, everything's been modeled in Blender. <clears throat> so um, let's say if we go to the overhead panel view, we can see the overhead panel. And this whole panel, just as an example, has been modeled in Blender. So let's, you know, if you want to open that model and look at it, uh, we can do that. So let's do that. And, and, and you might want to, and and, and uh, you might ask, okay, what's the point of opening Blender models? Why do we need to do that? That'll become evident later on um, as I continue to explain how everything is kind of intertwined. So let's go let's go open this panel in Blender. So this is Blender. Um, let's see. You'll be greeted with you know this little screen here. And th this is just a nice little quick menu where you can kind of select like, okay, I can I want to make a new general file or 2D animation. This is where you can kind of quickly do that. Or if you want to open a file that you just recently opened, you can do that as well. But I'm not going to do any of that stuff. I'm just going to go here. And I just kind of want to go briefly over some of this Blender stuff um, that you may have learned already in the Blender Pluralsight video. But... I just want to give you a little brief review. So this is going to be, if you look at my mouse, 
this is going to be the scene collection where you can see all of your objects right now defaulted if you open blender for the first time it's going to default to having a camera a cube and a light <clears throat> and then after that we can you can see we have our scene collection this is your scene remember and this is your scene collection your scene collection is going to have all your objects listed out in kind of a bulleted list here um, and so if you click something a camera it's going to highlight it over here so you can click you can highlight it from from the scene collection or you can click on it in the scene itself um, which is nice you can also hide objects this way you know whatever you want to do and this is your properties panel used for changing the properties of said object. So if I click on the cube, I can change its location, right? Or I can rotate it, I can scale it in any direction, which is nice. Um, let's see. There's also other stuff you can do. You can modify it in different ways and I'm not gonna go any over. I'm not gonna go over any of this stuff because that's I think that's out of scope of these videos. If you want to learn more about what you can do about Blender, like I said before, watch the Pluralsight videos. All right, so let's open the overhead panel. Um, first thing, f first things first. I always like to just delete all this stuff. You don't really need any of that stuff. So go to to open the overhead panel. Go to File, and you want to import. And select AC. Go to now. You want to navigate to where you saved your FG aircraft file. For me, that's in my C drive under users under my name, and then it, it's it's here for me. I don't know where you guys have saved it, but just navigate to where you've saved it, and then uh, open it. Open the 787 aircraft. Go to models, flight deck. And then the overhead panel is right here. So, and then after you select it, select import. And then we can see that you have it here. Now, some more kind of navigational tricks here is that you can zoom in and zoom out using the scroll wheel, like so. You can also, if you want to rotate around the object, you can press the middle mouse button and kind of move your mouse to rotate and then you can also pan across an object using shift middle mouse and then moving your mouse so and then let's say I want like a front face view a front face view of the object I can I mean I could rotate to where you know it faces me directly like so or if I want an exact front front face view I can go to the top right hand corner to these axes. If I click X, it's going to lock my view to the front view. Well, not, maybe not lock it, but it'll, it'll take me there. Yeah, you can also go to the side view, top view, you know, but for this, it'd be most useful just to look at the front view. So I'm going to zoom in using the scroll wheel. I'm going to shift middle mouse to pan across and I can look at it pretty nicely now so so how does this relate to so you know all the all the knobs and buttons here have been have been uh, designed and modeled and have been named so if you look at you know this button for example this this uh, control knob it's called the seatbelt switch this one's called the wing dot anti ice and the way that we animate knobs and buttons and switches it's not through blender blender just models everything it's through xml code and vs code so we can look at that real quick for the seatbelt switch so let's navigate to vs code and you know, when you first open it, it's going to look something like this. Um, so if I were to 
say if I wanted to have defined code for this seatbelt switch, then I would go to Blender, open up overhead panel model, and uh, I'd find the name of that switch in Blender. Okay, it's called this. I would copy that name, or you can just memorize it. And then I would go to VS Code, go to the search bar, and paste that name into the search bar. And there we have it. We have locations of where this knob is being referenced in code. Now, it's being referenced in this file and this one. We'll look at them both. This file, .ac, is just a Blender file. So this, this knob is being referenced, it's saying, in this file, which we have open. So OK, so that makes sense. And then it's also being referenced in the .xml file. OK, let's, uh, let's look for it here. It's called the seatbelt switch. OK, here it is. Cool. Here's some code for it, for that knob. So you might ask, OK, what, what is XML code? What, what are we even looking at here? XML code basically is just a list of animations. And you might ask, okay, what are what are we animating? We're animating the objects. We're animating objects being called from this file, which is the overhead panel.ac file, which is the which is this file here. So what VS Code is doing is that it's taking this file, taking the objects, and calling that object and it's animating it. Now, I won't go into what any of this stuff means yet. I'll probably do that in another video. I just kind of wanted to show you how it's all kind of interlocked, intertwined, you know, if that makes sense. So flight gear, all the models, all the buttons and stuff are modeled in Blender. And then all these buttons are, all the buttons that need to be animated are animated in XML code. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you're still with me. And then, so we have XML code, we've got Blender, and we have Flight Gear. Hopefully you understand how all those are interlocked and how all how all those are changing. Now, um, I wanted to also discuss kind of briefly um, nasal code. Nasal code. If I can find it, just any any nasal code here. This kind of does all the background processes, and <clears throat> what happens is you just kind of make your code for the, you know, this is for the anti-ice sub-panel, I assume. So this is all the background code for that kind of process, and usually with this background code, it's it's you're coding something for something to happen, and then you're changing property tree values. That's usually what happens in the property tree. And flag here can be can be opened with the slash, and these are all the property tree values. There's many of them, and so hopefully that all makes sense. Um, in future videos, I'll be showing you how to exactly how to animate objects and kind of explain what all this gibberish means. Um, and then I also wanted to go over before I let you go. I um, wanted to go over how to, you know, if I made changes to this, how would I see those changes, so on and so forth. So if I were to make changes to this, if I were to, let's say, delete this, let's delete it, how would I save this? Well, <clears throat> uh, if you remember, we imported the file. So to save it, we have to export it. So go to export, go to AC files, go back to where your FG aircraft is located and then go back to models flight deck overhead panel and click export and that should save your changes that you made in blender and then if you want to make sure that those changes have been saved go into VS code and if you see over here there's a one here it means that one file has been changed you can see that the overhead panel.ac file, which is the Blender file, has been changed. Now we can we can look at this 
we can open this file and <clears throat> we can see that line 2795 has been changed. Now, if we were to tell somebody, you know, what we did in this branch of code, we wouldn't tell them, you know, I, I, I won't, I don't want to, I, I would suggest not telling them that you changed this from 39 to 38, because that doesn't really explain what you did. I would explain, I would, I would tell them, okay, I deleted the pass sign seatbelts knob. That would make, that would make more sense than telling them I deleted one kid, <laughs> you know? Um, and so, and so you might ask, okay, what if I like, don't like these changes? How do I, how do I get this thing back? So you can do that in VS code. Um, you can revert these changes. You can discard changes and it'll, it'll revert those changes back to normal. Um, you won't see those changes in Blender unless you reopen the file, right? So, file import this. You'll see that this knob is back. Now, you can also delete it and just press Control Z. So you can do that and then export it again. It's up to you. Um, kind of the same thing with XML code. If you delete it, if you, if you delete something, then uh, and save it, then you'll see your changes here. You can see what you've deleted, or in some cases, you know, what you've added to the code. Um, and so you can also revert changes if you want to, if you don't want to keep the changes you've made. And it'll, it should turn everything back to normal. Should. What happened? Should. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. Resolve save conflict. Let's uh, open that file again. I don't know what's happening there. Delete it. Save it. And then we can see our changes here. And then we can revert them. Discard changes. And there you go. It goes back to normal. Sorry about that. And I think that's all we're going to go over this video. Um, I'll probably see you guys in the next video.